there's a war on the horizon. Or perhaps it's already upon us. Who knows? Hopefully that bit of suspense got you in the right mood. Well, let's get to business. In January of this year, I reported in a video a very interesting topic, which was the rumored reacquisition of the Spanish theme park resort Port Aventura World by a certain American entertainment company that has theme parks all around the world, Universal. Currently, Universal has theme parks in every single market Disney is present in, Western USA with Disneyland and Universal Hollywood, Eastern USA, both with both brands' biggest resorts, Universal Orlando and Disney World, Mainland China with Universal Beijing and Shanghai Disney, Southeast Asia with Hong Kong Disneyland and Universal Singapore, and Japan with Universal Osaka and Tokyo Disney. But there's one other place, a magical place where Universal does not have a presence, but Disney does. And that is our own continent, Europe. In a war, normally there's two sides. Here, the other side of the war is Disneyland Paris, a resort that's extremely important for the future of the Disney parks, as other resorts have been filled with problems that I will explore ahead. Also, I have two videos if you want to learn more about Universal's past in Europe, as I won't be going over that, so make sure to check that out if you want to learn more. Going back on track, since last year, we've been hearing whispers of Universal's grand return, as this would be made by buying the Port Aventura World Resort outside of Barcelona, Spain. Since then, a lot has happened. So let's begin on this side of said war and give some updates on what has happened since January. We've seen the change of names from Universal Parks and Resorts to Universal Destinations and Experiences, as it better, and I quote, reflects the full breadth of innovative offerings we bring to fans around the globe, as well as our intent to continue to expand our business in the years ahead. A lot of trademarks have continued to appear, being registered in Europe by a Spanish company, one of which being the Destin Agents and Experiences new name. Then, things went silent on the internet, but in behind the scenes, I continue to receive hints and whispers, but nothing in concrete. It wasn't until some weeks ago that a huge Spanish journal shared exclusive information announcing that Port Aventura owners Invest Industrial and KKR activated the sale of the resort, that the transaction was to be 1 billion euros, and that the sale of the assets would be conducted by JP Morgan. Nothing was said on who the buyer was, when it's happening, or what the future might hold, leading some to believe that this was nothing but a calculated leak to the press. This is all very interesting. But then came something else. Ali, Disneyland Paris's infamous sleeker and co-owner of Outside Years, that the takeover would indeed be carried out by Universal and shared new information as he had heard several echoes of departures from Disneyland Paris employees hired by Universal in Spain. After digging a little deeper, I found that these cast members were actually people in important positions, such as managers. This, if true, would officially begin the Universal vs Disney theme park wars in Europe, a place where Disney has had peace of mind since opening, and here is when we switch sides and explore Disney's. Since the opening of Euro Disney in 1992, Disney has had little direct competition. The biggest theme parks that do compete with Disney in terms of visitors would be Europa Park in Germany and Efteling in the Netherlands. Port Aventura as a resort welcomed 6.1 million visitors in 2018, with their two theme parks, Port Aventura and Ferrari Land, being more of an expansion than a park, water park and conference center. In the same year, Europa Park welcomed 5.6 million in their one theme park. These are all absolutely destroyed by Disneyland Paris's 15.5 million guests in their two theme parks, Walt Disney Studios and the Disneyland Park. It's clear that while many other theme parks exist close and far away from Disney's European resort, none comes close to its success. 
This was the case in Orlando, where the Magic Kingdom and Epcot were the two kings. That was until Universal Orlando came and continued investing. Last year, Universal Studios Florida had more visitors than Epcot and Animal Kingdom, and Universal Islands of Adventure had more than those two and Disney Hollywood Studios. With Epic Universe opening soon, in just two years, and many political problems in Florida, Disney is losing their status of undefeatable champion in the state, with Universal getting stronger and stronger each day that passes. With this, and surrounded by Universal in every front, Disney must look at the one resort where they have the freedom and no sign of Universal nearby, and that is Disneyland Paris. As I've reported in the past, there's a misunderstanding of Disneyland Paris's revenues. In this video, I go over the true profits and where they've been going. This is to understand that Disneyland Paris has been making Disney money for many years. That said, it's also the one resort alongside Shanghai and Orlando where Disney has a lot of room to expand in the future, being the second biggest resort in terms of land Disney owns. With that small summary, we can move into the more interesting part, and that includes $60 billion. Last week in a conference with Wall Street and other investors, Bob Iger and Josh Tamaro announced that the Walt Disney Company is looking to invest around $60 billion worldwide in their theme parks and cruise line. Since then, it appears Disneyland Paris received a heavy paycheck, and if what I've been hearing is true, the resort will be getting huge expansions in the coming years. Currently, we have been talking about the third Walt Disney Studios land, possibly Lion King themed, and the makeover of the rest of studios, but that paycheck, whose number I'm about to share, will be used for so much more. That number has been said to be from 10 to 15 billion euros. Think big, think new lands, the proposed Star Wars land in Discovery Land, new hotels, Disney Village, and other park expansions and more. All this leading up to the crown jewel, the third park of Disneyland Paris that they're obligated to build until 2036. While I can't share a lot of information on what the next decade will hold for Disneyland Paris due to the lack of information, I can say that this will be the most exciting time in Disneyland Paris' history since its opening in 92, that this huge budget seems to include the development of that third gate. Let's rewind just a little. In 2018, Disney announced 2 billion euros would be invested in the resort. This investment would be used for the Walt Disney Studios expansion, hotel refurbishments, modernization of systems, the Disney Village makeover and other costs. So the expansion of the second park would not be 2 billion, but less. And that includes everything we've seen before and the third land. But now, there's one thing missing here. The war. If or when Universal arrives in Europe, the status quo will change. A lot. Universal could bring with them huge IPs, such as Harry Potter, Nintendo, Jurassic Park and many others. If this happens, Disneyland Paris won't have the peace of mind it has known since the beginning, as a huge, new player would suddenly be playing the same game in Europe with them. The lack of real competition has allowed a lot of lack of investment in the parks, but this would be over as both resorts fight to win the European crowds. With this, the race for the third Disneyland Paris gate begins. Since those 10 to 15 billion would already include the development of that third park, how much could be set aside for that project? Well, Shanghai Disneyland as a whole cost 5.5 billion US dollars, including the hotels, shopping area, and park. Over at the other side of the pond, estimates say that Epic Universe is costing up to 4 billion US dollars. So if this park is as big as one of those two, and costs 5 billion, since we know Disney spends a lot of money, there would still be 5 to 10 billion for many other projects, such as new hotels and park expansions. On the other hand, we have Universal, who would probably build a second gate. Again, Ferrari does not count as a second theme park in the resort. It would truly compete with the Parisian Disney parks, being just another reason as to expand Disneyland Paris with a third gate 
in some years of course. It's good to remember that while there's been a lot of chat and whispers about Universal coming back to Europe, these are just rumors and nothing is confirmed until the company announces it. The same thing for Disneyland Paris. Here I don't think we will hear the 10 to 15 billion investment since it would be spent in many different projects and different timelines. But maybe someday, in about 13 years from now, we can look back and see where exactly that money was spent. Going back to the war, one thing is for certain, and that in a normal war, no side truly wins. But this is no normal war, as here there is someone winning, and that's us, the guests and fans, as competition breeds innovation and investment. These developments take a long time, and this is a literal beginning of it all. There are still many years to pass, plans to be made, projects to start, and construction to follow. Europe seems to be starting a very exciting future for theme park resorts right now, and there's no better way to follow everything than to follow me. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss when I upload a new video, and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and in our Discord community. Links are in the description. So, with these news, rumors, and developments, what is going on inside your head? Let me know down below so we can have a chat. Well, that's it for today's video, and now, as always, Thank you for watching, and that's a wrap.